1863, the London Underground Railway, the world's first underground railway, opened. It grew and developed over time, tunnels running deep below the city, so deep that those tunnels were used as bomb shelters during World War I and World War II. If you've ridden the underground, otherwise known as the tube, you know how steep the escalators are to go down. You go down and down and down. And if you, like me, don't like to look straight down, you've perhaps avoided doing that by looking at the walls and noticing what's on the walls. A mixture of advertisements for current London theater, real estate, other commercial ventures. Those posters lined the walls, framed pops of color against pretty gritty tile, the backdrops of the stations. I love riding down those escalators, noting what plays are running, and have over the years taken note too of quirks of language and wonderment about what a particular ad meant, perhaps by American limitations on the Queen's English. Last week, as I spent some time with colleagues and friends in London, and navigated the tube amidst a transit strike. Not so fun. I spent more time than usual waiting for trains and buses in London and looking at the signs. There were the usual. And then there were a few of a different ilk that appeared throughout the stations, three signs in particular. The first, a brightly colored heart, sort of 1970s groovyish colors and font. And it said in huge letters in the heart, be kind. It asked, quite simply, passengers to show respect for one another. The second ad was a huge ad over the tracks as you're waiting for the train with images of five hands, each of a different color. And across the hands, with a word in each hand, it was written, we stand together against hate. This poster tells passengers that if they experience or witness a hate crime directed at someone else because of race, religion, sexuality, disability, or gender, they should text or call, and then a number or numbers are given. And then there's a third sign. This one has different images, but the same words, very pithy. See it, say it, sorted. The message being that if you see something or someone that doesn't look good, Say something, and it will be sorted out. That is, you'll be helped by the transit police. You don't have to do it alone. You get appropriate assistance. I kept seeing these posters. They were prevalent throughout the city. And so many reasons, I'm sure, while they're there, right? Increase underground ridership, which has been down since the pandemic. Provide safety. And a message of an intolerance of hate in our so often violent world. And of course, being who I am and what I do, I was looking beyond the situation, beyond the signs, for other meaning. What a surprise, I found it in Torah. This Shabbat, we, it is called Shabbat Korah. We read a Torah portion about a man named Korah, who was one commentator, describes him as the arch demagogue. Korah takes himself and two accomplices and challenges Moses and Aaron. He says to them, you've gone too far, we're all holy, and why do you lift yourselves up, selves up before the community? You may recall that Moses was an awfully reluctant leader. When God comes to him in the burning bush and says, you're going to go to Pharaoh and you're going to go to the Israelites, Moses says, uh-uh, not me. I don't speak well, they're not going to listen to me. He did not want the job. Korach comes in, as commentators explain, and Lee lifts himself up. He challenges Moses and Aaron for his own grandeur, his own gain. Korach is looking for his elevation, in contrast to Moses, who was not looking to be a leader, even though it was for the greater good. Keep in mind, while Korach is looking for controversy, it's not controversy that is the problem here. It's that Korach is lifting himself up. In fact, Judaism loves controversy. We have a great teaching in Pirkei Avot that says, a debate for the sake of heaven, that is, for a higher goal, will endure. But a debate not for the sake of heaven will not endure, that is, if it's petty or for personal gain. Korach was up for personal gain. 
And the opening verse of the portion says, Korach took himself. That is, this is about him. Moses, of course, responds with great humility. He looks to the greater good, he looks to the people, and he falls on his face, a great biblical sign of humility and beseeching God. He wants to stop the rebellion, and he wants to stop God from destroying these disobedient Israelites. Interestingly, Rabbi Rachel Cowan, who herself, while a great Jewish leader and teacher, was quite a humble person. In a commentary on this portion, Rabbi, Co excuse me, Rabbi Cowan wrote, writes, how do I recognize Korach in my own thoughts and actions? I read that and I read it again. I thought, well, I'm not Korach, and Rachel Cowan certainly wasn't Korach. What does she mean? She wrote with her own transparency about her own Korach moments, moments of personal doubt, moments when in that doubt she made herself the, the, the key figure. She made it all about her as opposed to being all about the greater good, about others. Why? Because then it gave, helped her feel in control. And great Rabbi Cowan teaches the Korach in all of us gets triggered by different emotions fear, anger, anxiety, greed, or doubt. When this happens, she explains, we lose sight of the whole and we become caught up in our own inner dramas. Our needs, our personal needs, eclipse the needs of others. Now in Torah, as those of you may, and some of you may know, Korach has a horrible end. God has the earth open up and Korach and his counterparts are all swallowed up by the earth. It's not pretty. That earth moving under their feet has nothing to do or nothing like Carol King's song, but it is in fact about death and about punishment. The earth is swallowing him up. If we're honest, we've probably had moments in recent weeks, days, and months where we felt like the earth was swallowing us, us up. And in those moments, we could well become like Korach. We could well turn within and just worry about me, about us, not about the greater good as so we get overwhelmed by problems of our world. But we can't. So if we go back to that London underground messaging, it says, be kind. We stand together. See it. Say it. In other words, we each have a responsibility to look around, to notice the injustices, the hatred, and the dangers in our world. And then we have to say something about it declare the wrongs aloud, and then do something. Act with kindness and act to proclaim, to protect others. So I invite you to join me this Shabbat and in the days to come and do just that. Look around, look outside yourself, your home, your community, and see what upsets you. You already know it, I'm sure. Name it aloud and then act. It's easy to be overwhelmed, so pick one topic, one issue, one concern, one act discrimination or hatred, and start there. You know, life lessons are of two sorts, the positive or the neg and the negative. The positive are the things we want to emulate, right? My grandfather or grandmother or friend acted with kindness, so I will. Negative life lessons are the ones we don't want to emulate. I won't do that because that person hurt me or did that that was harmful. So that's our message this week, a negative one. Be the anti korach Let's get beyond self-interest and look like Moses at the greater good and act for it. Our tradition is clear, as our sage Hillel teaches, Im ein ani li mi li, huksha ani ma'ani, ma ani, ve im lo akshav ein matai. If I am not for myself, who will be for me? If I am only for myself, what am I? If not now, when? Indeed, if I am only for myself, if we are only for ourselves, if we are only like Korach, then what are we? And if we don't act now to be like Moses, then when will we? Shabbat Shalom.